Welcome to worship at Grace View Presbyterian Church on the second Sunday of Advent, the Advent Sunday of Peace. We are glad that you are taking part in worship today. I was asked uh, by one of our members at our Zoom Fellowship if we could do communion um, virtually, and so we are going to do that today. So I invite you to hit pause and go get yourself some juice or some wine or whatever else you might have on hand that is liquid and something bread-like. It could be crackers, it could be bread, it could even be Cheerios. Uh, we're not too worried about what elements you use. I'll be using our little prepackaged communion um, thingy. I don't even know what to call it. Our little prepackaged communion and uh, using that as my elements. I also want to invite you to uh, pray for Fred Jacob. Um, he's been having some heart troubles, been in and out of hospital a little bit, and I know that's been a stressful situation for their family and for Jane. And so if you would just keep him in your prayers, that would be great. We're called to worship with these words. Now is the time to get ready. Let us prepare the way of the Lord. Now is the time to be changed. Let us repent and seek forgiveness. Now is the time to welcome God into our midst. Let us worship God in humble expectation. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. God of all times and places, you are holy and loving. You create pathways where there is no path. You prepare us to receive wonders beyond imagining. In every time and every place, you have raised up leaders who point to your glory and honor your greatness. You have called us by name, baptized us with water and with the Holy Spirit. You bless us for abundant living and set us in the world to serve you. We are your people, and so we worship you as our creator, our redeemer, and the breath of our lives, one God, now and always. And it is with the words that Jesus taught that we continue to pray, saying together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We gather at the Advent week for our Advent liturgy, and the words for your responses will be on the screen. In this season of Advent, we celebrate God's peace. Jesus Christ, born the Prince of Peace, calls our community to justice and leads us in the way of peace. We call one another to honesty and humility and respond to each other with abundant grace and forgiveness. Our community values relationships. We live in harmony with one another even when we disagree and strive to glorify God in everything that we do. Our community longs for unity. We work together with other churches and organizations and live out God's reconciling love for all the world to see. Together we are a sign of God's peace in the world. If you would join me in prayer, let us pray. God of all people and all nations, you break through the cynicism of our world and lead us like a gentle shepherd. Open our eyes to see the signs of your coming kingdom and inspire us to participate in all you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today is Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. It's entitled in the NIV as, Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. 
This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to, the, to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I don't know about you, but this has been the most anxiety-ridden year of my life. I remember when we made the decision to uh, suspend in-person worship on March 15th. In fact, we didn't even call it in-person worship back then, because our, in our context, all worship was done by gathering together in person. We didn't have any experience with virtual worship. But I remember how hard that decision was. Our board and our session were of one accord. We didn't have an argument or even a long discussion. The decision was clear. And I remember being at home in the first few days of that first lockdown, watching Premier Ford and Prime Minister Trudeau speak daily. And I thought to myself, I cannot imagine the pressure those men must feel. I didn't want to have to be in charge of a small Presbyterian congregation, never mind a province or a country. I knew how much anxiety I felt about making decisions for us as a congregation. And I cannot imagine having had a greater amount of responsibility than that. I do want to say to you that I don't make decisions in a vacuum. Even small decisions, I like to run past a committee or some of the elders. Big decisions are, of course, decided together at session meetings or at board meetings. And I have to give a huge shout out to our elders and our board members who have been compassionate, wise, and unified in the decisions they've made throughout the pandemic. I'm so grateful to each one and for the way that they serve their church and work with their minister. But despite that, when you're a minister, there's a certain amount of the buck stops with you. That plus a pandemic has made this the most anxiety ridden year of my life. And so why do I tell you that? Well, because this is the Advent Sunday of peace. And peace may have been in short supply for you this year as I admit to you that it has been for me. I think one of the reasons we struggle with peace, especially in difficult times, is that we think of peace as the absence of, you know, the absence of conflict or the absence of anxiety or the absence of violence. But that's not the biblical understanding of peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Sometimes I think we're invested in worldly peace, not the kind of peace that Jesus gives. The peace that Jesus gives is the shalom kind of peace. Shalom is a Hebrew word, and as with many Hebrew words, it has a lot of meanings. Shalom means peace, harmony, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, health, tranquility. Shalom is a blessing, a manifestation of, the, of divine grace. It signifies a state of prosperity, of blessing, and harmony on several levels, physical, spiritual, and mental. 
Do you hear how that language is different? It's not absence of language, it's presence of, manifestation of, incarnation of language. When God talks about peace, he talks about it on a whole different level. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. If you've been following my blog, you might have picked up on the fact that I'm a little obsessed right now with For King and Country's Christmas album, A Drummer Boy Christmas. They're a Christian band out of Australia, and I was listening to the album for the first time, and there's this track that begins with one of my favorite scripture passages, Isaiah 9. That's the, for unto us a child is born passage. But when they got to the line that is often translated as, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end, they said instead, and there will be no limits to the wholeness that he brings. And my brain kind of stuttered for a minute because it was an unexpected phrasing. But then I began to grin because I realized that they were highlighting shalom. That with that word choice, they were making the point that it's not the absence of kind of peace that the child born to us brings, but the shalom kind of peace, the presence of wholeness, limitless wholeness. So having said all of that, what about the scripture that we've read today? Where do we see shalom in this piece of the birth narrative? Matthew writes, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was uh, pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So in order for Jesus to bring wholeness, things have to be broken. I don't think anyone would argue that our world is broken right now, that our world has been broken for a long, long, long time. And for Mary, this is about as broken as a young woman of her day could possibly be, pregnant before marriage. This has the potential to absolutely ruin her life. It has the potential for her to land her in homelessness, outcastness, impoverished. While she's done nothing wrong and we know that the child is from the Holy Spirit, the fact is nobody in her day is going to believe that. We struggle to believe it today. Without the protection of her betrothed, she would have been judged and condemned by her community. Absolutely broken. Matthew writes, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Joseph is a good guy, and he loves Mary, and he doesn't want to cause her humiliation and pain, and so his in instinct is to quietly end their engagement. But even doing it quietly not calling attention to the situation, that wouldn't have been enough to keep Mary from being disgraced. Matthew writes, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Ah, shalom. So much shalom in this part of the passage. First of all, the angel says, do not be afraid. The angel comes as a messenger of heaven to fix the brokenness of fear that is in Joseph. The angel says to him, Mary, Mary because her child is conceived of the Holy Spirit. Take her in matrimony, because God is present. The angel says she will give a birth to a son, and you are to name him. This is not just a 
simply thing that the angel says, this is a sign of belonging. In essence, what the angel says to Joseph is, you are to raise him as your own. God is making you into a family, even though there is nothing typical about the way that that is happening. The angel says his name will be Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. You see, the shalom is not just for this little family, but for all people, for all time, for eternity. That's truly shalom, perfect wholeness, unending peace, harmony between God and humanity, brought about by this child of salvation. Matthew writes, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. Shalom comes, you see, not from the absence of conflict or violence or anxiety. Shalom comes from the presence of God. God with us. God with us. God with us. Every word in that little phrase is as important as the others. Every word in that little phrase is a promise and an oath and a vow. That shalom has come to us, even in the midst of unbelievably turbulent times. God with us, wholeness, shalom, peace. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful that you are so very different from us. When we approach something one way, you have a totally different way of approaching it, and your way is always the better way and the right way. We thank you for the message of shalom. We thank you that the peace we have from you is not as the world gives. Help us to cling to your presence. Help us to share that shalom with everyone we meet each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we are in Advent, we are gathering at the Advent wreath for communion today. And so we gather with these words. Who is invited to the Lord's table? All are invited, the young and the old, the rich and the poor, the lowest and the least, sinners and saints together in communion. Come find your place here where there are no strangers or foreigners, only brothers and sisters in the sight of God. Why do we give thanks at the table? We give thanks because Jesus showed us the way. We give thanks because Jesus is the way. Jesus is a gift from God for the world. He was called Emmanuel, God with us. He came to save us from our sins. He lived a life of thankfulness and gave his life as a sacrifice for many. We give thanks that he is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Why do we eat and drink at this table? We eat because on the night before Jesus died, he ate with his friends. He gave them bread and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At that same meal, he took a cup of wine and said, drink this cup. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Why do we remember at this table? We remember, sorry, what do we remember at this table? We remember Jesus' birth, his presence as God with us. We remember Jesus' life and his love. We remember Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. We remember the resurrection and the promise of new life. We remember that we are waiting in hope to see Jesus again. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. God of grace, thank you for this bread and wine and for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. God of hope, fill us with your Spirit today that we might have the wisdom to understand the mystery of this table and the depth and height and breadth and length of your love for us. Through this meal, strengthen us to be followers of Jesus, a community of peace in a broken world. Friends, this is the body of Christ. Take, eat, and remember. And this is the cup of the new covenant. Drink it and remember your Savior. Once again, let us pray. Jesus, you truly are Emmanuel, God with us. In this season of hope, may the meal that we share together nourish us to be your body in the world. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. With the angels in heaven, we join in singing your praises. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.
And now, dear friends, go from this time of worship in peace and in love, in joy and in hope through faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.